All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we are going to build the cheapest possible amateur radio data transceiver. This does every data mode there is. This is going to do email, SMS, uh, WS, JTX, FT8, JSA call, every mode we've got. Um, all here in a portable package with a battery, a radio, a transceiver, an all-in-one cable. Let's build it this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. Still getting away with the bumper music. All right, let's put this thing together. Let's make let's make this operational. All right, so this isn't going to be the best radio data transceiver hotspot you can get, but it is going to be the cheapest, okay? And we're going to start with the Beofang UV5R. That is the actual radio itself. It's a handy talkie here. Handheld unit, 5 watts. It's $23. It's an incredible value. Now, the receiver is a little dodgy. You're going to need to be around some strong signals to get it to work. But for $23, um, that's a huge value. So that's the Beofang. Now, you also need a Raspberry Pi computer to hook up to your radio if it's going to be a, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot for data modes. Um, and this is a Raspberry Pi Zero 02 wireless. $18. $18 for a full-blown computer that you can hook up to your amateur radio. That's cheap. Um, and you can get them all over the place. It just, just happens to be at Pi shop now the other th last thing the third thing you need is some sort of radio interface adapter now since we're using the Beofang there's a two-prong Kenwood interface on the side here um, that sets us up up to buy the AIOC that's the all-in-one cable and this interface is your Raspberry Pi to your radio using this USB cable which sticks into the side of the Pi here and that's it okay so these three things are what you need the Pi the AIOC and the radio. Now you can get this little screen here, and I, you know, you should get the screen just because it's so cool. The screen's like twelve bucks. It just, it, it just pushes right onto the pins on the Raspberry Pi. And and the construction, the assembly here, I mean, it doesn't even deserve a video. It maybe took me forty seconds to assemble all this thing and kind of do some cable management too, so just to get this online. Um, the battery, I'm going to assume you have. Um, if you can't get one with a PD or power delivery port, that way you can actually power your radio, a 5-watt radio, um, using a PD port on this uh, USB-based battery. And, of course, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless consumes almost no power. We're talking like 150 milliamps. So this is the ultimate cheap and low-power radio data transceiver uh, hotspot that you can possibly get. Um, one thing I'd have to mention, uh, obligatory, the software actually running on that DigiPi, it's an SD card. Card. I guess we should add that to the price. An SD card, what is that, like five bucks? Any SD card will work. Uh, get the digipi.org amateur radio software. That's what's running here. It turns your radio basically into a data hotspot so you can access it with uh, any Wi-Fi device or web browser. This can be totally offline. This is like this you know, post-apocalyptic prepper kind of thing. Uh, completely portable, really low power. All you need is some sort of Wi-Fi device. It becomes a hotspot or you can put it on your home network. So anyways... Put all this together, get your phone or your web browser out, and let's do some quick operations. All right, so this DigiPi Amateur Radio Data Hotspot has way too many modes to demonstrate in a single video. But uh, let's say you're new to amateur radio and you just want to do some real practical stuff. Maybe you just want to send an SMS message, an email, um, yeah, real simple stuff like that. So we put the SD card into our DigiPi. Um, we clicked on the initialize link here. And we entered our call sign and a bunch of other information about uh, how we want to operate our, our transceiver. And what we want to do now is start the APRS. This is a global packet radio network. It's on VHF 144.39 in America's 144.8 in Europe. Um, we're also going to start the web chat service here, which makes it so we can just use our web browser to do APRS packet operations, send messages to other radios, other phones. You can do basic email stuff with this. Um, to see the interface, you come down here and click on web chat. And here we have a texting interface like you would just see on your iPhone, right? Amateur radio doesn't have to be that hard. So uh, DigiPi is providing the APRS web chat interface. And we can do real simple stuff like, uh, I don't know, send a, a message to a call sign called SMS. Um, we can set our path to wide 1-1. One, one. And uh, I've actually set up an alias for my phone. Uh, you can put any phone number here. It could be 555-123, or it could be 8675309. Uh, 
Um, but you can set up an alias. I got one for my phone called CL. So I don't give everyone my phone number and say, hey, this is a, an SMS via RF. Now, what's going to happen is uh, this web browser is actually connected to DigiPi on over, wirelessly uh, over Wi-Fi. It could be via a hotspot. And this is going to transmit that packet. The Pi is going to generate the packet. Uh, it's going to go through the cable and transmit out the radio. Um, we've got a real dummy load antenna here um, because I know I've got DigiPeters nearby in the APRS network here in California. Um, so I don't really, really need a great antenna system. But for you, especially with the Beofang, get an external antenna. Get a real antenna. Okay, this one's just for cool demonstration purposes. Um, so I've got infrastructure around me so I can get away with this little antenna here. So I'm going to go ahead and send this message here we go send and we can see I, I'll turn the monitor on so you can hear it I sent the message and sure enough here it is on my radio this is this is an SMS message over RF it's there's just no way that's gonna focus though anyways it's sent and I can reply to say uh, this is a reply and now this is going out over cellular networks okay i just sent that now and that's going to come through on the radio here in a minute um, but what i know you're thinking great craig you did an sms message you know i can do that right now i can i can do stuff on the web with a web browser but let's pretend there's no internet let's pretend there's no power all you have is this little device right here. You can do all of this with the no power, no internet. Um, this is completely standalone. And I've just sent SMS message to and from my phone here using nothing more than an amateur radio. Um, you can do other cool stuff like uh, email. Let's go over to, uh, I'll go ahead and turn these off. Um, there's Pat, WinLink email client. I want to highlight Pat, actually. Pat is software that you could, it's a, basically it's a web, turns your Raspberry Pi into a website that gives you a full-blown email interface. Okay, it just makes email so much easier on the radio. And of course, it works on the DigiPi and this data transceiver. So P Pat, version 19.1 is out there. Thank you guys so much for putting this together. It's just such, such great software, great community too. Um, so what I want to do here is just turn on, um, let's turn on the Pat WinLink email client. And this basically turns our transceiver into a website that does email. You'll also notice that it fired up an AX.25 node networking because uh, that's what we're going to use here on VHF. Now on Pat, um, we want to use... Uh, we're going to use a 145.050 for our frequency um, because we've got a pretty robust uh, AX.25 network here in California. Lots of uh, email servers on that on that frequency. So what we're going to come down here, we click on Pat, and we've got an email interface, right? You've got your inbox, your outbox, sent, archive, actions. This doesn't have to be hard, you guys, right? There's a status thing down here. You know, this isn't uh, 1980s. We can do all this cool stuff um, with just using the Raspberry Pi. So what I want to do is, uh, you know, I've already got email here, you know, I can read it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and check my email. Email. So I'm just going to say connect. Now I need to connect to a, uh, a radio on this frequency and they're all based on call sign. In fact, I've got a WinLink email server called KM6LYW-10. It's going to use the AX.25 transport and I'm just going to click connect. All right, we're connecting. Off we go. Make sure I'm on the right frequency so you can hear it. I've got a monitor going. I hope that's not too loud. We're checking email. Now you can see down here the status of what's going on. And it says, uh, it basically just logged in, checked email, there's nothing there, and then it disconnected. So what I can do is say, uh, compose, and you can send this to a call sign, or you can send it to uh, uh, an actual email address. So I can send mail to KM6LYW and say, this is a test. And hey, I'm sending email over RF. It's really this simple. And then I do post and do an action connect and basically do the exact same thing, only this time it's going to transmit my message. And this is loud. And we see it's connected. We're watching the little log down here. And there it says there's a message that's going to be going out. You don't have to understand what all this stuff means. And it says transmitting. This is a test. You can see our data transceiver is going wild. Remember, this is completely wireless. It's all over Wi-Fi and RF. 
So there's a Wi-Fi transceiver in here, and then we've got the amateur radio uh, right there. So we just did it, no problem. Um, we just sent an email and checked our email. So th this is Pat. I mean, it's pretty cool stuff. Pat software, Pat Winlink email client, totally cool. Hey, patrons, you guys are killing it. So there are a lot of data users out there. And the reason I know that is because every patron of KM6LYW Radio gets a copy of the DigiPi SD card image that we just demonstrated here today. So there are thousands of you. We've got Mark, Steve, Stores Keg, Andrew, Jeremy, Paul, Brian, Chris, Le <laughs> Leon, Jim, Steve, Buddy, Kevin, Robert, Aaron, Scott. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so all of these guys have DigiPies just like this one. And, you know, it can be a large format. It could be on a, a zero. Um, we did it as cheap as possible today. I would really encourage you to upgrade your radio first. I mean, that, that's a $23 radio. Yes, it technically works. But, you know, if you get one of these um, super heterodyning kind of uh, radios rather than an SDR radio, I think the receive is going to be a lot better. Don't get me wrong, the transmit is just fine on the Baofeng, but it, it's subject to descents. Um, so just be aware of that. You're not going to pull in weak packets. But if, you, if you've got a nearby Digipeter um, in, your, in your area, um, yeah, it's going to work just fine, especially if you can get the antenna outside. So thank you, patrons. I really appreciate it. Um, once you're a patron of the channel, you get access. You're able to download, if I can find it. <laughs> It's actually at digipi.org. I'll find it here. Digipi.org. And you can go ahead and download that SD card image and do all of the modes that we just talked about today. Build a super cheap radio data transceiver system. Um, and so anything in the in the Patreon account gets you access to the SD card image. Um, it's really some kind of way for me to give something tangible back to patrons of the channel. Really appreciate it, guys. Hey, my name is Craig. Amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in California and I'm I'm clear. <laughs>